بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said start with yourself and do charity on it and if anything remains then do charity to your family and then any, if anything remains, then do charity to the closest and then the closest among your relatives. This is a general guideline from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we need in our life because there are many misunderstandings among Muslims nowadays about the priorities of spending. We find people who spend lavishly upon themselves and neglect their families. There are people who do the opposite, neglect themselves and pay attention only to their families. And then we have a very strange phenomenon where people are spending upon themselves and their families, but they are neglecting their parents or their relatives. And this is a big problem. The rights of relatives are mentioned and highlighted in the Holy Quran and by the hadith of the Messenger Wasallam. It is the advice and order of Allah Almighty. The Messenger Wasallam said, Allah Almighty orders you to treat kindly your mothers and then he advised you to treat kindly your mothers and this narration twice in the other narration three times and then he advises you to treat kindly your fathers and then he advised you to treat kindly your relatives so they always come immediately after the direct family this is sometimes mentioned immediately after worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not associating anything or anyone with Him. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran and worship Allah Almighty and do not associate anything with Him and do good to your parents and your relatives. And then he continues mentioning the needy among the society. But the priority are given to whom? Depends. To the parents first and the relatives. Always. In the other verse in the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty says, And they ask you, O Muhammad, about what to spend in charity. Allah Almighty says, Say to them, whatever you spend of goodness, then to your parents and your relatives, and then the needy and the orphans and the wayfarer. So the parents and the relatives always come first. And there are many good reasons why. So if you need to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you need to get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way to do that is by spending on the closest family and relatives. So if somebody is neglecting his direct family, his direct relatives, no matter how much you spend on others, that will not cover for them. Because the rewards to relatives is multiplied by Allah Almighty. It's considered double the normal reward. Zainab radiallahu anha, the wife of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anha, she was wealthy and he was poor. So she asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I spend on my husband and on orphans, my nephews, the sons and daughters of my brother who died before, they are orphans, but they are my family. So if I spend on them, will that be considered a charity? So you see, it seems as if this is the normal thing to do. It's not a charity. You are spending on yourself, on your family. The Messenger وسلم, said, yes, it is charity as well as Salatul Rahim, reaching out for the relatives. So it will have double the reward. Yes. Not a single reward. You are doing twice the goodness. And this concept in Islam is very beautiful, very practical in life. And it goes through, through, throughout the guidelines in Islam. So how do you reach out to your relatives? What are the things that are required from you? What are their rights? We'll mention in very quickly some of these. The first one, keep a relation with them. Keep the relation and the connection alive, always. Now what is required here is not that you, for example, call them every day or visit them every day. What is required is to be there during their good time and share it with them. And if they have a difficult time, you need to be there for them and try to help them and support them. This is what is required. 
Al Hassan al Basri radiallahu anhu says that two things are required from you towards your parents. If you are able to help them, then you need to help them. If you are able during your good time, you have to help them by practice with your money, with whatever extra that you have with you. During your difficult time, if you cannot, if you are poor, or if they need way beyond what you have. So you need to support them with kind words and comfort. So this is what is the practical aspect that is mentioned. Also keep visiting them. Now visiting them, if you are far, Alhamdulillah nowadays, telecommunications are there and it's very easy to keep connection with them. So you can call them over. Again, what is required is to call them during good times, during occasions and so on. As well as, if they have a difficult time or a bad time, you need to call them and comfort them. And visiting them, this is by the practice of the Messenger وسلم, as well. We have among the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, he used to visit his uncles and the families of their, uh, his uncles and uh, their, their sons after their death and so on. And the Messenger وسلم, used to say, the uncle is the equivalent of a father or of the same status like a father. The ankle from the father's side. And the Messenger وسلم, used to say about, he used to visit his two uh, aunts from the mother's side. And he used to say, the aunt from the mother's side is equivalent to a mother. She has the status. He said this when he was judging regarding the daughter of Hamza عنها, who should take her. And then he gave her to her uh, aunt from the mother's side. So that is the status, and visiting them and visiting their uh, sons as well and their uh, daughters. Again, the visit is not required to visit them all the time. Visit them on occasions and be there uh, for them if you can. The next point after that is to spend from your money, especially on those who are poor. So if there are any poor person among your relatives, it's your duty if you are able to help them to actually help them. When Allah Almighty mentioned spending, Allah Almighty says, then give to the relative his right and to the needy and to the traveler. So when he spoke about the relative, he said his right. You are not doing any favor to them. You are family. So this is part of what you do. Like if a father is doing something good to his children, you are not doing them any favor. This is your duty. You brought them to this world. You have to take care of them. Simply, they are your family, is it? Or do you come to your son and tell him, oh, today I've spent so much upon you, I gave you so much food, so much water, so much clothing, so you have to do one, two, three to me? Doesn't make sense, does it? That is, that is what you should do. This is his right upon you as a child, isn't it? So here Allah Almighty says to the relative, his right, as if it is this, this is the normal thing to do. You're not doing anything. But when he spoke about the needy and the traveler, he did not say their rights. He says his right only about the uh, relative. Now, uh, and if the, they are not poor, and if you are wealthy, then raise their status, making their life better. If you are able to make their life better, this is part of what you uh, should do. Now, next point after that is to pray for them. This is something that most of us are neglecting. We do remember ourselves in prayer, sometimes our parents as well, our families and so on, but rarely do you hear people who are making dua, making dua for their relatives. It was the guideline of the Messenger وسلم, the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, he once visited Umm Sulaim uh, she is his uh, aunt from the mother's side, and then he took to the side, one side in the house, and he prayed there, a prayer apart from the faridah, nafl, to bless the place for them. And then he made dua for her and for her family. So making dua for the relatives is something that we need to remember. Often enough. Now the goodness that you do to the uh, relatives, this was the practice of the Sahaba radiallahu anh. We have examples. We can mention the example of uh, Abu Talha radiallahu anh. Abu Talha was a wealthy person in Medina. And among his position was a very beautiful garden in Medina. The most beautiful garden in the whole of Medina called Bayruha. So he once heard the Messenger وسلم, reciting the verse لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ You will never attain righteousness until you spend from what you love. 
you will never attain righteousness until you spend from what you love not what is extra what you don't care about what you have already finished with what is old what is broken that is not righteousness righteousness from what you love the most dear thing to you as it was the lifestyle of the messenger where somebody is asking me you'll give him whatever the best that he has at that uh, moment so here, when he heard this, he came to the Messenger of Allah He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I heard you reciting this verse. And my most beloved position is the garden of Bayruha. So I give it as charity for the sake of Allah Almighty. This is it in front of you. Do whatever you want with it. The Messenger of Allah said to him, This is truly a winning property. Doing something that is very good for you, profiting property. I've heard what you said, but I see that you distribute it among your relatives. So the Messenger of Allah did not do anything with it. He says, no, you take it and distribute it yourself among your relatives. So he took it and he distributed it among his relatives. See the status of relatives in Islam. Although there were many poor people in Medina at that time. But the Messenger of Allah said, no, give it to your relatives. We have another example, Umar when he got the land in Khaybar, he says this was his most beloved position and the best he had ever. So he came to the Messenger وسلم, to give it as charity again. So the Messenger وسلم, said to him, I think that it is better to keep it as endowment. So keep the land and give the charity all of its fruit and produce. And this is what Umar done, which has made it as a waqf and distributed all the income of it to the poor and to the relatives. He specifically mentioned to the needy and to the relatives of Umar radiallahu anhu. To the best of my knowledge, it's still an ongoing endowment of Umar radiallahu anhu till today. <coughs> so that is, these are the examples that we have about the, the, the care and, and, and rights of the relatives. And there are many others. But we'll conclude with mentioning one aspect which is after their death. What about their rights after their death? So this was during their lifetime. What about after their death? Do they have rights? We do remember speaking about the rights of spouses and children and parents after death. But we rarely hear people speaking about the rights of relatives as well after death. And there are many. Every person in Islam has rights after his death, even strangers. But the relatives, they have specific rights. Among them is doing the best that is in their interest and taking care of their families, the need of their families and orphans after their death. Again, this was the practice and guidance of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Ja'far the cousin of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, murdered, uh, the Messenger وسلم, went to visit his family and he asked for his children and he comforted them and spoke kindly with them and assured them. The mother spoke to the Messenger وسلم, and says, who will be taking care of them? Now after the death of Ja'far, their father, it's a very difficult situation, especially when you are uh, living uh, in a strange land. They were from Mecca, they are in Medina now and so on. The Messenger وسلم, said, Do you fear poverty and need for them while I am their guardian in this world and in the hereafter? In this world, because the Messenger وسلم, is, in is in the status of their uh, ankle, like their ankle, so they, they are his family. So he said, I'll be taking care of them, as well as the Messenger وسلم, is the guardian for all believers. As he says, he says, I have right to everyone among you, to every believer, as a caretaker of him, as a guardian. So anyone who dies and leaves money, I do not need any part of it. It is for his family and his relatives. But anyone who dies and he is in debt or poverty, it is upon me, I will pay it off. I am their guardian, their caretaker. So if this towards all Muslims, what about their direct family, their relatives? So he says, do you fear poverty for them while I am their guardian, their caretaker in this world and the hereafter? So it is, and this part of taking care of the orphans within a family, this is something that is very important for the whole society. Somebody is dying within the family, he will not be caring much about the children, what is going to happen to him. He will die in peace, knowing that the family will take care of the orphans. They will not waste them. 
unlike what some people might do, some ignorant people and criminals who will devour the, the, the right and the inheritance of children and, and, and poor people and orphans after the death of their parents and their relatives. No, that is, that is the exact opposite. So in Islam, you need to take care of them and care of their uh, family after them. Uh, finally, those who are taking care of their orphans, uh, those who are taking care of their relatives and paying the rights of them, there are many good things for them. First, this is one of the means of happiness in this world and the hereafter. One of the means of success and one of the means of getting closer to Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty mentioned this in the Holy Quran and the Messenger Sallallahu complimented the meaning as well. Allah Almighty says, so give to the poor his right and to the needy and the traveler. That is better for those who are seeking the countenance of Allah, seeking the face of Allah Almighty, the pleasure and closeness of Allah Almighty. That is better for you. If this is what you are seeking, so this is what you should do. So those who are doing it, they are closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Then Allah Almighty says, and those are the ones who are successful in this world and the hereafter. Allah Almighty will guide you to success and bless you in this world and in the hereafter. The, uh, what about uh, the, the hadith of the Messenger وسلم, about a mean to attain paradise? The Messenger وسلم, says the people of paradise are three. Three categories. Three are the people who are the people of paradise. In the middle he mentioned, and a person who is kind and have a soft heart, who is merciful and have a soft heart to his relatives and to every Muslim. Those who are merciful and have a kind heart, soft heart to their relatives. They are among the people of Jannah. They are guaranteed Jannah by Allah Almighty. So you need to, and, and this is something very important. Sometimes we, we hear among the family problems that comes and the questions. And they say, they keep on asking me, they keep on begging me, they keep on calling me and so on. Because they believe that you could help them. That is what they are doing. So if you are able, you should. If you are unable, say something kind to them and give them some hope in the future and inshallah and so on. Interestingly, the son of Abdullah al-Rahman bin Awf, they, he was a very generous person. So much so, sometimes he will give everything and remain poor. So, when he is wealthy, when he has something, his relatives will come and visit him and he will give them. And when he is poor, nobody is visiting him. So his wife said, I have never seen worse than your family, your relatives. When we have wealth, they come all the time and they take. But when we are in need ourselves, nobody is visiting us, nobody is asking. He says, no, by Allah Almighty, this is their good morals and etiquette. When they know we can help them, they come. When they know we cannot help them, they do not come so that we will not be in bad face in front of them. See the, 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 the purity of his heart. Unbelievable. Although everybody now knows that this is not a good behavior from them, for sure. But he himself says, this is their good moral, their good etiquette. So they do not want to put us in a difficult situation. So the idea is, this is a mean of attaining, that is the kind of uh, mercy and, and, and softness and kind heart, uh, heart uh, towards the relative that we need to pay attention. May Allah Almighty make us among those who uh, reach out to their relatives and take care of them and help them when they can. And may Allah Almighty make us among those who keep connections and may Allah Almighty make us among those who attain the highest place in paradise. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.